Correct. So the background is that uh, venetoclax is a drug that is an oral agent, is approved for treatment of newly diagnosed patients with acute myeloid leukemia. And it is, uh, as a single agent, it has a very limited activity in this patient population. So it's approved in combination with other agents, namely azacitidine, decitabine, or low-dose cytarabine. In the patients with relapse refractory setting, it essentially has, again, very limited activity, underscoring the need for some novel therapy. In our previous study, we showed that in uh, a drug, the name is Ervinia chrysantaspase, or actually the short-acting form of that, the asparaginase Ervinia chrysanthemi in patients with relapse refractory AML depleted plasma glutamine levels. So my research is on the glutamine addiction, which is an amino acid, the building block of protein, of acute myeloid leukemia cells. So the hypothesis was that if we combine the specific asparaginase that can deplete the plasma glutamine level, can we see there's some synergy between the venetoclax and glutamine? And what we did is that we had the first some in vitro study in the tissue culture. We combined this and we saw that the very low dose of the PEXI or PEC, uh, Ervinia uh, PEC chrysantaspase that has been tested in children with ALL, acute lymphoblastic leukemia, can significantly enhance the cell killing activity of venetoclax. So then we moved on and we did some very robust mechanistic study. We looked at the, the genes that they are overexpressed or underexpressed after each of the treatment groups. So we had four treatment groups. One was control, essentially, DMSO or the just solvent. One was pecrisantaspase, one was venetoclax, and one was combination. And we saw that in the combination group, the number of genes that they are upregulated or downregulated was significantly more than any other group. Then we looked at what genes are upregulated or downregulated. One of the genes that they were up was the gene that is important for the protein translation. So what is protein translation? In the dogma of the genetic, we have a DNA that the DNA gets transcribed to mRNA, and that mRNA gets translated to protein, and protein does mix us, us, they essentially does the function. From the transcription to translation is a very complex machinery how our gene codes, they get converted to the amino acid, which is the in protein, right? So we did some uh, very robust mechanisms, again, in the transcriptome and also the translatum, and we found that this combination of the pec and pec uh, and venetoclax significantly interfere with what we call in it cap complex formation. Cap is when the uh, ribosome, which is the machinery of making protein, is bind to the mRNA, which is coming from the DNA, and start the protein. So the initiation of protein translation essentially was shut down in the T cells that they were treated with venetoclax and pecrisantaspase. That was a very, very robust finding, and we proved it in multiple different ways. One important thing, one of the proteins that is downstream of this uh, protein translation, the name is MCL1, which is a protein that, uh, if it's overexpressed, prevent the cells to die. And that's one of the mechanisms of resistance to venetoclax, which is approved drug. So we saw that this combination significantly inhibit the MCL1 as is controlled by the protein translation, we're calling it EIF4E, which is the, the, one of the protein that start the initiation. So this is all very good. So we've had an in vitro study. We had a very robust mechanism of action study. We said that can this work in the human or sorry, actually in the animal. So we combined this combination in animal. We saw that no animal had lost weight. Losing weight more than 20% uh, more than of the weight is one of the major of toxicity in the in vivo or animal model. And also, we did not see a very significant changes in this uh, uh, serum chemistry. And uh, white blood cell was uh, decreased, which is kind of mechanism of the venetoclax, but it wasn't that much compared to many other combinations. Then we moved on to the efficacy data. So we had a cell line that is very, very 
complex karyotype. Having a complex karyotype or complex cytogenetic is by far the worst prognosis in patients for acute myeloid leukemia. So we had this cell from a patient that uh, had a relapsed AML after some uh, myelosplastic syndrome, and the patient had a very complex karyotype. We turned that cells uh, into a cell that we can inject to mice, and then we added some uh, chemical, the name is luciferase. Essentially, the leukemia cells, when they grow, you can monitor them by imaging the animal. So we carried this study for almost six months in the animal model, which is very interesting. A lot of the time, you don't go for six months. And we saw that the venpec c for example, by 36 is in an abstract, we did not find any detectable disease in the, in the uh, combined group compared to each of the other groups, as well as the control group. Then we saw that the other animal in other groups started dying versus no animal in the venpec c group reached to the level that they are died by their leukemia, which, and we showed this in the photon intensity, all of them, they were highly statistically significant, showing essentially this combination, which I coined it, it's a new regimen. It's never been tested before, before this EHA. So this is uh, essentially um, proposed to the world, this combination that I coined the name Venpexy, uh, Venetoclax and pe uh, Pecrisantaspase. We saw that this is a far superior regimen compared to any, uh, any other control in a very, very highly resistant model of leukemia. Importantly, we said that this is by chance or not, so we repeated this study, and, uh, and we saw again the same things. When we, in the second cohort, again in the uh, venpec C group, there, essentially there was negligible leukemia. And in the second cohort, what we did after, so th this time we didn't go that long, we, after about a month, we sacrificed all of the animals, and then uh, we isolated uh, their bone marrow cells, and we uh, took the, and did the same mechanistic study, and the mechanistic study showing that the mechanism that we saw in vivo was exactly similar to the mechanism that we saw in vitro in tissue culture. So that validated our mechanism of action. The second part was the pharmacodynamic. I told you that I'm a, a glutamine uh, person. So we measured amino acid level in the plasma of this animal, and we saw that by day 33, essentially, there was zero glutamine and zero asparagine, which is completely going by mechanism of action of the pecuris antaspase. So essentially, we depleted the plasma, glutamine, and, uh, and asparagine. And as the glutamine gets converted to glutamate and ammonia, we see that glutamine goes zero. The level of glutamate goes up. So in conclusion, essentially, this venpexy, it's a completely new regimen that in vivo, it's extremely promising. Essentially, in the preclinical model, the story cannot get better than this. It's everything makes sense from the mechanism of action, and this combination, it's essentially targeting the, ri the ribosomal protein synthesis, which is the major drug-resistant mechanism. We showed that it's tolerable. We don't kill animal. And uh, we are hoping that we are very soon, we are planning to have a phase one study in patients with relapsed refractory AML. Particularly, I'm very interested to see this result in those patients with the complex karyotype, which unfortunately we, have a, we see a lot of those patients. And those patients, again, if you, after the transplant, it's still the mortality rate is very, very high. So this is a very novel regimen in summary that I'm hopeful that we can, um, uh, uh, apply that to a very resistant type of AML.